I'm with Jim Rollo from State Farm Insurance, and today we're up at his new location. It's actually a, a new business, right, Jim? Brand new business, new agency, no clients. We're up here on Upper Front Street. <laughs> You're a chancer. We're at no money, no clients, need orders. That's us. <laughs> you know, uh, you've been very successful in your office down in Endwell, and yes. uh, yep. you know we do a lot of business with you down there. But. I'm glad that you expanded up here because, uh, that, you know, it's a developing area. Yeah, it is. It's really a, a great area, and uh, customers are responding, so it's great. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah. But, you know, I, I wanted to talk today about flood insurance because, I mean, you know, what I've been hearing and reading in the paper has put a, put a scare through me yes. for this real estate market in our area. What is really going on? I, I see high payments right. for uh, some of these uh, right. existing properties that now have uh, new flood insurance policies that are very high. Right. Well, a couple things. One is that there was a law that was passed that went into effect, and some people were receiving renewal notices with higher premiums. Uh, the government has since passed an amendment in the middle of March right. that will scale back some of those increases, but will not necessarily eliminate them entirely. So they're going to put a cap on how much it can increase in a given year at between 18% and 25%, which is better than what? Each year? Yeah, each year until they get to what they call full risk premium. Wow. So, yeah, it's, it's still, you know, it may not happen all at once, but ultimately in some cases it's still going to be a challenge for people. Depending on the elevation. Elevation, right. So... So one of the things is if a property is in a flood zone and someone wants to get a flood insurance policy now, the, the law still, even after the amendment, still requires you have to hire a surveyor to get an elevation certificate to determine the difference between the lowest floor in the house, which around here we have basements, so it's usually the basement floor, and the base flood elevation at that location. So the, the, the bigger that difference is, the, higher the, the higher the premium. So if you, you know, I had a case in the town of Union, minus 12 feet. So the lowest floor was 12 feet below the base flood elevation, and the premium was $9,000 a year for under $100,000 worth of coverage. Now, if, if the, the lowest floor is above the base flood elevation, then the premium can be a lot lower. A lot lower. Okay, but when I... If I'm going to buy a house right. and I find out the elevation, am I going to find out not what my payment will be this year? I want to know what it, when it's at its full impact, what my you know, what it, what the premium ultimately would be. Yeah, like what's we can being actually right, versus yes. what I own. we can actually submit for rate and obtain what the full risk full rate premium okay. would be if there were no subsidies. Okay, so now let's kind of project what is going to happen here if people are you know fixing up flooded houses or buying a flooded house after somebody got it cheap and redid it and they got a new floor new kitchen new bathrooms that sounds like a great deal and they have a mortgage payment typically of uh you know like six seven hundred dollars a month plus some taxes so they're at a thousand dollars a month it's possible that they could go up to another $600 a month or $900 a month going a few years out. It is possible that that could happen, yes. The okay. rates could go up, and, and there's a couple other factors in there. One of the factors is that the lender, so let's say they get a mortgage, the lender uh, determines how much flood insurance is required. The minimum is the mortgage amount. So if someone has a $100,000 mortgage, but the replacement cost of the house is 200 the bank can and often will say, you need $200,000 worth of flood insurance coverage, even though the mortgage is only 100 Right. So what happens is they write a mortgage, then they sell the mortgage. The new owner of the mortgage says, now you need more flood insurance coverage. And we're helping a lot of folks work through that situation. Wow. Right. So even if they own a house now and they're in good shape, that mortgage could be bought Sold. by someone else, mm -hmm. and the new and servicer they could require yes insurance, higher higher coverage, and that's shock. So the other factor we have in our area is, in March of 2009, 7,000 property owners in Broome County received a letter from FEMA, 
telling them that their property was ultimately going to be mapped into a flood zone. Those maps still haven't been approved. Here we are five years later, right? That was March of 2009. Here we are in April of 2014. Meanwhile, people are buying properties with no idea right. yeah. that they're yeah. going to be faced with this. Right. And so those properties, we can look it up, and we do a lot of that work for people to help them look it up. Will this ultimately be in a flood zone? We tell them, you know, is it or is it not scheduled eventually to go into a flood zone? So imagine you buy a property today, the lender doesn't require flood insurance, but then the maps are amended and, and, and made official, and now all of a sudden you get a letter from your bank saying your property is now in a flood zone, you have to get flood insurance. And the flood insurance this year is going to be this much, but in three years or four years from now it's going to be that much. Right, yes. That's scary because if somebody doesn't want to get flood insurance, they could just buy it and add it to their mortgage payment. Is that correct? Yes. The yeah, they force place it. it. It's called force placing uh, right. the coverage. Yes, the bank can buy so it. So now all of a sudden somebody who had a $1,000 mortgage could have a $1,800 mortgage payment. It's possible. That's entirely possible. Yes, it is. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So that's a scary, that's a scary yeah, thing for people. Is. So what we're yeah. telling people to do is if you're going to list a property, and that property is either currently in a flood zone or going to go in a flood zone. Get an elevation certificate. Have a surveyor come in, maybe about $500, get an elevation certificate. Then get an estimate you can get insurance. an estimate on the insurance, and you can show a potential buyer with a fairly high degree of certainty what the future holds. Because right, they're going to need that. In you fact, have to I would that. think that the underwriters for the bank would need that because they don't want somebody to be in a financial position that they can't make their mortgage payment. Right. Well, unfortunately, what they're looking at is the current flood zone situation, yeah, and they're not, not thinking about the potential future flood zone situation. But they the will bank soon. Right. Those bank underwriters will be yeah. all over that pretty yeah. quick here. So, but it's we're all, the other thing we're telling people: it's important if you can if you can secure a mortgage with a bank that only requires the mortgage amount number one for flood insurance, not the replacement cost and they retain the servicing of the mortgage in-house, they're not going to put you in a position where the mortgage is now in the hands of someone who wants you to increase it to the replacement cost. That's also an element of protection for a buyer. So do you think the, the advice for buyers at this point would be any buyer, really, that's not buying a house on a hill someplace, mm -hmm. is to, in the contract, require the seller to provide to them an elevation and a, and a, and a possible uh, insurance policy, yes. at least an elevation yes. of yeah. that property. Yeah. So they right. know what they're buying, they know yes. what they're getting into long term. And ideally... Because they'll the, never be able to sell it again. If they get whacked with something like that, right. it is going to kill the equity right. of that property. And ideally... The value of it. Ideally, the person listing the property, the owner, current owner, would take that initiative themselves and yeah. get the elevation certificate to be able to show potential buyers, because it's going to protect the value of their property, to be able to sell it for right. more potential. That's right. yeah. yeah. So that's well, what we would recommend. More, more to learn in the future here. More so. to learn in the future, and uh, we're every day, multiple times, we're getting calls from potential buyers, yeah, we're getting yeah. calls from realtors, we're getting calls from uh, mortgage people, yeah. we're getting calls from uh, folks that are planning to list or did list their properties, yeah. working with surveyors, helping people understand what's going on. And there's a lot, yeah. of, a lot of confusion. Yeah. You know, we had the other day, we had somebody, a realtor actually called us and said, well, this, these folks got a quote for $800 for this flood insurance. And they had an elevation certificate. Can you look at it? I said, sure. We submitted it for rate to the National Flood Insurance Program. It was 3400 The other agent who quoted this quoted it incorrectly. Wow. And so... They could have ended up owning right, that imagine, property. Right. Wow. Imagine, you know, you're talking about a $2,600 difference in the premium. Right. So get a second opinion. Get a second opinion and make sure it's ours. All right. Okay. Thank you very right, much. John. Yep. Thank you.